And good morning. Good to see you all here today and welcome and welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. Um, all of a sudden the front of the church got emptier from last week, but anyway, it's good to see the back pews so full. Anyway, and um, so we begin on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated. In our lesson from the book of Acts, the apostles are brought before the council of religious authorities in Jerusalem and again commanded to cease teaching in the name of Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the temple police had brought the apostles out of the temple, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them saying, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God 
rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had, you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witness to these things. So is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Using your bulletin, please join me in reading Psalm 118 responsibly. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory. In the, in the tents, tents of, of the righteous. righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right, the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live. And, and declare the works, works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But, but he, he did not, not hand me over to death. death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will, I will offer, offer thanks, thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He, he who is righteous, righteous may enter. enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me. And, and have, have become, become my salvation. salvation. The same stone which the build builders rejected has, has become, become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. And he is marvelous, marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. From a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. In this lesson, John the Seer addresses seven representative churches in Asia Minor with a hymn of praise to Christ the firstborn from the dead, and now ruler of all. A reading from the book of Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For the past two months, the world's attention has been focused on the country of Ukraine. First, there was a buildup of Russian troops near Ukraine's eastern border in Russia with the ex exclamation that they were just war games and many accepted this to be true but the truth soon became a reality as those troops then began their unprovoked invasion of a sovereign nation what has followed has been the destruction of towns and cities and the deaths of thousands and the displacement of millions these are the headlines on the news each morning and evening, on the front pages of the newspaper and in news magazines. Even now, many in Russia have been led to believe that it's all a hoax. It's a hoax and that it isn't really happening. Even when friends or family from Ukraine reach out to people that they are close to in Russia and tell them, what they are witnessing, the Russians won't believe them. They say Ukraine is staging these scenes with actors. They say that Russian troops are there to protect and to liberate the Ukrainian citizens from an evil government and that Russian troops certainly wouldn't harm civilians. You might be sitting there thinking, well, what does this all have to do with Holy Week and Easter? Well, for me, it helps me see things from Thomas's point of view. 
It helps us see things from Thomas's point of view. He knew what he believed. Jesus was dead. And what others were telling him was contrary to all that he'd ever seen or believed could ever happen. Once you were dead, there was no getting up. That was absurd. I guess Thomas forgot about Jesus calling Lazarus from the tomb. Whatever the case, Thomas needed to touch and feel before he could believe. He needed to see it with his own eyes. You see, doubt is a complicated matter. It can indicate a critical mind, one that asks questions and never takes things at face value. And there is another type of doubt, one that is driven, driven by deep emotion, an emotion that is stimulated by loss. It's a form of despair, a despair that clings to loss and refuses to believe that there is any future other than one described by that which is lost. Life will never be the same again. Friends may assure us that we will get over our loss of a job or a loss of an ambition or a loss of a relationship or the death of a dear one. But we, we don't want to hear it. We're not ready to hear it. We can't believe it. Thomas's doubt is this type of doubt. During his long career as pastor of New York's Riverside Church, the late Harry Emerson Fosdick spent many hours counseling students from nearby Columbia University. One evening, a young man burst into his study and announced, I've decided that I cannot and I do not believe in God. All right, Dr. Fosdick replied. But describe for me the God that you don't believe in. The student proceeded to sketch his idea of God. When he had finished, Dr. Fosdick said, Well, we're in the same boat. I don't believe in that God either. Could that have been the motivation behind Thomas's doubt that day? The God that Thomas believed in and the God made present to the world in the flesh of Jesus weren't the same. Thomas only thought he knew who God was and who Jesus was. Maybe it was that phrase at the Last Supper which confused him when Jesus said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Whatever the case, we find that Jesus didn't condemn Thomas for his doubt. And he used that moment of doubt as a teaching moment about faith. Doubt isn't bad. Doubt isn't wrong or a sin. Doubt is actually quite useful in the faith. I'm reminded of the words of Francis Bacon, the English philosopher, who stated in The Advancement of Learning, if a man will begin with certainties, he shall end in doubts. But if he will be content to begin with doubts, he shall end in certainties. Otherwise, we may find ourselves falling for the gospel of every Tom, Dick, and Harry out there who wants to write one. Doubt can act as a filter for us. Somebody else wrote, I spent 20 years trying to come to terms with my doubts, 
Then one day it dawned on me that I had better come to terms with my faith. Now I've passed from the agony of questions I can't answer into the agony of answers I can't escape. And it's a great relief. Again, theologian Paul Tillich said that doubt isn't the opposite of faith. Rather, it is an element of faith. And Frederick Beekner, Presbyterian pastor and writer, puts it in more basic terms when he says that if we don't have any doubts, we're either kidding ourselves or we're asleep. He characterizes doubts as, quote, the ants in the pants of faith, end quote. They keep it awake, they keep it moving. Doubts do not disqualify us from discipleship. I think that's what Thomas felt. Jesus took his doubt seriously. He didn't dismiss it. Instead, Jesus offered the proof that Thomas needed. I also think that Thomas wanted desperately to believe. He wanted desperately to believe. But Thomas was a realist. He saw the spear pierce Jesus' side. He saw the Romans take Jesus' dead body off of the cross. He saw the burial clothes. He saw the tomb sealed that day. And it had been three days. He wanted desperately to believe what the others were saying to him. But there were so many things, so many unanswered questions getting in the way. Jesus knew all this. He understood it completely. We don't all come to God or come to believe the same way as others. So Jesus meets us where we are. He meets us where we are in our journey of faith in our wrestling with our doubts. Jerry Cook, in his book, Some Things I Have Learned Since I Knew It All, tells about having open-heart surgery. After he recovered, he had a visit from a man who was fearfully facing the prospect of his own bypass surgery. He said, I want to see your scars. I want to see your scars, he said shyly. And Jerry took off his shirt, and the man gently traced his finger up and down the violet scar that ran vertically down Jerry's chest. The man went on. The doctor says that the most painful part of the operation will be the surgery on my legs. They're going to take out veins from my calf to use in the heart bypass. Looking at Jerry, he asked, can I see your legs? Jerry rolled up his pants. The man got on his knees, and without shame, he put his hands on Jerry's leg, touching the scars with his finger. When he rose to his feet, there were tears in his eyes. Thank you. Thank you, he said. Now I have hope. Seeing and touching those scars gave him hope. For Thomas, seeing and standing right there alive, seeing Jesus and touching gave him hope. Death had been conquered. Touching Jesus' scars gave Thomas hope, hope about the meaning of his life, hope that life really does matter, hope that Jesus' words and teachings are true, and the knowledge that Easter is true. Thomas was able to touch and feel. All of you and I can do is taste and see. Like Psalm 34, verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. 
Soon we will celebrate and receive the sacrament of communion. And next to the resurrection itself, this is as close as we get to being Thomas. This is as close as we get to those scars and those wounds. And yet Christ invites us to extend our hands, to extend our hands, just as he did say to Thomas. But he says it to us not to touch his side and his wounds in his hands, but to reach out and receive the sacrament of his body and blood. The sacrament that embodies his sacrifice on the cross for us. Just as Jesus gave Thomas hope and a future and sealed his faith with that touch, these simple elements of bread and wine that we received this morning gives us hope and gives us a future and seals our faith. All we're asked to do is believe, stretch out our hands and receive So I give you this simple invitation. Come to the table this morning. Bring your doubts with you and replace them with faith. Believe, stretch out your hands and receive the risen Lord and let it empower you to then go forth into the world and share the good news of God's love to all people. Amen. Turning to page 358, let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people, which are form one. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, and for the clergy and people, and to ask your prayers for our diocese as we continue our prayers for the election of our 14th diocesan bishop and for the candidates. And in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and parishioners of Christ Church, Alexandria, Emmanuel on the Hill, Alexandria, and for the students and faculty of Episcopal High School, Alexandria. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, we pray for the president of Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this county of Middlesex, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. We pray for those who travel on land, on water, in the air, or through outer space. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. I ask for your intercessions and thanksgiving at this time. Pray for all refugees. We pray for baby Zubin, brother Christopher, Peg Moncure, Rich Donoff, Joanne Bruce, and Larry Clark Jr and the people of Ukraine. We give thanks with those celebrating their birthdays this week. Grace Parker, Nigel McFall, Sue Newman, and Doris Radcliffe. And with those celebrating their anniversaries, Richard and Cindy Naylor, Homer and Jenny Hartung, and Matt and Victoria Rosendahl. For all our intercessions and thanksgiving, Givings, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, to thee o, o Lord, Lord our God. God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Once again, welcome, and uh, I saw some new faces at the 8 o'clock service and some new faces today at this service, so welcome to you if you're visiting with us and or worshiping, I should say worshiping with us for the first time, and hope you will come back, not be a visitor, but just be a part of us. Um, also, to those who are worshiping <laughs> online, um, thank you for doing that as well, and you know, we might would find it helpful if you took an opportunity to hit the like button or some other button that lets us know that you're watching with us and so that we can have a general idea of who's worshiping with us. That would be, appreciate that. Um, please um, join us for some refreshments over in the parish hall following the service today. Um, for those who purchased dinners from the Boy Scout troop and may not have picked them up. They are still in the kitchen and the refrigerators. Um, for those who didn't take the opportunity to support the Boy Scout troop and buy some of the um, wonderful barbecue that they produced and their dinners, um, there is some left. I mean, there's a, quite a bit left actually. And um, so again, it is $30 and you get enough barbecue for really more than four people. Um, containers, coleslaw, baked beans, four brownies, four buns, sauce. I mean, it's a it's a a, a, a dinner for four, and um, and it's thirty dollars. So if you're interested in that, please send, see me after the service, and I will make sure it gets put together for you. Um, and we will have an offertory hymn today, and that hymn will be hymn 180, hymn 180 in the hymnal. Um, are there any other announcements that I've missed? Okay, if you did not hear that, please, if you'd like to take lilies home after today's service, please do so. If you, um, Otherwise, they're just going to end up dying, and they're so beautiful. Um, I think that's it. So let us ascribe unto the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Remember, hymn 180.
And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. By your Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep your everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep your everlasting life. The body of Christ, the, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you an everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to God. <laughs>